www.thelovelyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyfamilyf
So you have that there. We're going to glue that down. And you can mix and match your patterns however you want. It can be all the same. You can do the two outside ones the same, the middle one different. Have three different ones like I have here. I'm using inked botanicals. I'm just going to open this up. It'll be a little easier for me to place that down. Okay. And then I just love this plaid. It's just so sweet, especially with the flowers. So this next one is two and a quarter by three and three quarters. So they all will be three and three quarters. So two and a quarter by three and three quarters. We'll put that back, glue that down onto here. So it's going to show. Okay, a little bit crooked. Here we go. The liquid glue allows me to shift it a little bit. Okay. And then the last one is half an inch. We've got a lot of those little half inch pieces laying around. So here's a good use of it. And that's going to go right in here. Because when you open this accordion, you're going to have room to write here. So you don't want this piece to be too big. We're also leaving the back sides of those folds open. You could always put another uh, color here. That would be fine. Um, this You could put one here, too, if you want more DSP. Um, but that would leave you just a little room to write. So when it's this way, if you wanted to, you can write across both of those panels. So this half inch by three and three quarters will glue down on the biggest part of the white accordion part. Okay, now when I um, cut my patterns here, I was thinking of it ahead of time. I know if you're doing this for the first time, you just had measurements. You didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and so you're crafting along here. But I thought about... Um, now, this is a bigger pattern, and it's more in front. But then with this skinny piece, I wanted those little flowers to show. So I did a little trimming above and trimming below to make sure that these looked nice. Like, I, it would have looked funny to me if I had cut it here and that I just had that stem. So I made sure I cut it in a spot that would look nice on the card that showed the pattern nicely. Okay, so now that's going to get glued down onto the front of our card. I'm using Lost Lagoon. It's one of my new favorite, my my new old favorite, new favorite of old colors. Let's say <laughs> I think it looks really nice with this um, inked botanicals. It's one of the featured colors in there. So again, this is raised too. Make sure you have plenty of glue on there. And then I'm just going to, you can center it or you can put it slightly high, whatever you like. I'm just going to make sure I cover some of that piece up there. And if a little bit shows, no one's going to know because it's a distressed look anyway. But look how pretty that is. I just love those colors, right? A lot of little pastel colors. And then a card will open this way. So now we need a sentiment. And I... Again, one of my favorites, layering leaves. Love those sentiments. I chose sending hugs. And I'm using the lasting label punch to um, put that on my card right in front there like that. So we're just going to overlap that on the front panel. Obviously not to glue it down because then... Your card would go like this, which isn't so bad, actually. <laughs> but um, your whole idea is you have that accordion fold. I have a little spot of blue on there I want to get off. Okay. Love my adhesive eraser. And so you can put this up with dimensionals or just glue it down with your typical glue, whatever you like to use. I'll put some dimensionals on here. I think I'll do three minis, one, two, three. That way I know I have ample coverage. 
Those are the regulars. And let me. I keep my um my phone adhesive kind of all together and a little a little bit on the side here. So this is kind of what I do that helps me. I have and I mark them here so I can see them kind of like a file. Regular, mini, and then the edges. When it comes down to I've used up all the little dots in the middle. I just keep a whole sleeve of just the edges because I know when I need something long or extra small, I'll go to here and I won't have to thumb through my others and see, oh, yeah, what can I pick off of that? And then same thing with the black, regular, mini, and um, I have one with edges in there too. So the regular, the black actually comes with a, an assorted pack where you have... Um, the big and the mini, the regular and the mini in there, but I've just separated them because it's a little bit easier for me to go to when I need it. And then I have um, just the, the foam sheets here that when I want to cut out letters and raise them up or die cut, you know, something full. The full uh, so there we go. That's my system. <laughs> All right. So let's get those minis here. And... I want to make sure that I'm not going to extend beyond the fold there. So one, two, I'm going to just put my finger there and make sure I stay within that space. Actually, I'll put four. It's only hanging on by less than half, right? So you want to make sure it's not going to fall off. I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm just keeping my fingers there so I know where the um, dots are. And I'm good. And then just hanging there. And then you can put whatever um, bling or gems you want on there. Well, I'm going to go to the Elegant Faceted Gems because they are very versatile. Right, I'm going to take the clear ones. And you can put them on your label or you know elsewhere on your on your uh, card. Okay, no, one. I'm gonna put one close to up there because there's a little ink spot that I don't like. Maybe detract from that. All right, and one thing I'm noticing now that I'm gonna have to take this off. I did the back here, but we're not going to want that showing, right? So I'm going to have to take that off and do it again. So not to worry. I'm going to put one over here. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of sparkle, right? And you open it up and you have room to write. And this kind of covers that area too. But yeah, no, don't, <laughs> don't jump the back of that. <laughs> Okay, so that's that. Let me just show you a couple other examples. Um, okay, this one I didn't score yet. Moving the cutting blade out of the way. Okay, here we go. One and a half. Three. Um, five. And a half and eight. Okay. All right, then just gonna fold it. I like to just get that preliminary fold so I know which direction it's going. Um, I'm using the Let's Go Fishing. I don't have the set, but I got the paper because it, it has some nice plaids. And even if your guy isn't into fishing, it still has a nice little masculine look. Maybe they eat fish. That's okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Pecan pie. Cane weave, I thought would be good. Kind of reminds me of like a, a fishing, old-fashioned fishing basket. And again, this is one that I was practicing 
my embossing with. So that's going to get covered up. And then on there, we're going to put some of the fishing um, themed thing there. So here are the patterns in the Let's Go Fishing. The colors are nice. There are, you know, they've got your blues and browns in there. You've got the wheat, which some people don't like, I know, but whatever. Um, but they're soft colors. They're not like, you know, just all blues or or whatever. So it has some mossy meadow, the wheat, the misty moonlight, the pebble path. Maybe you got your plaid, you got your little fish scales here, you got your little flies on hooks and some nice patterns. So like I said, even if you don't necessarily want the fishing part of it. The back sides are really nice. Here's some colorful flies. And then there's a nice little um, cross pattern there. And then you've got some that are like water. And then you have one that's like a map. And then just some that look, um, you know, textured, cross between wood and a fabric thing. I can't, can't tell what it's supposed to be, but it looks like a little of each. Yeah, so like I said, even if you're not going for a fishing theme, the backs are really, really nice. Great for those masculine parts. Okay, for those of you who don't know yet, I get my um, sleeves for holding my DSP from Stampin' Storage, and they have a lot of great products. And if you have never shopped with them before, I can give you a coupon code for 10% off your first order. So if you're interested, contact me and I'll give you that code. Okay, so I'm going to put my little plaid on there. I'm going to flip this around. Put the fish on the middle part. And this one I cut specifically as well, first time around, I cut my piece like this, but then when it was closed, okay, this guy was sticking out, but then these guys, you didn't really see their faces or their tails. So I wanted to make sure I cut it in a way that when it was closed, we could see at least some more of their faces there. All right, I made a mess of this here because it was crooked okay i think when i put my label over it it'll be fine right now this one also i wanted to get a full fishing rod so again i consciously decided where i was going to make those cuts and then you'll be set all right then we're going to glue that onto there and just add our label. So I'm going to use the same label, the same set for the sentiment. This time I'm going to layer it on a, on the circle. So I have a um, two and three eight circle punch that I cut that from the cut the one. Yep, cut that from the pecan pie. And well, I'm getting everything crooked today. Holy moly. Or should I say, holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to kind of layer that that way for something a little different. And I might put this one a little bit higher so that we can see some of the fishy faces there. So I'm going to... Um, See, I think I'll glue the circle down and then I will raise the other thing up. You can do either way. So that's just another idea. It just adds a little something else having the circle behind it. Or you can always just stamp right on the circle as well. Now this card looks great the way it is that great designer series paper and nice sentiment in the background. But if you wanted to add a little something extra, 
I would suggest the brushed metallic adhesive back dots to add that little metallic look. When you're doing masculine cards, texture, metal, wood, things like that all are good options. You know, those rustic colors. So you have that here. You have some texture and the, the browns. So let's add a little metallic um, element to that too. And of course, doing three is always a good um, number so that things aren't too you know, even or squared off. It still has sort of a random look to it, three or five. And I think these here, these um, brush metallic dots really add a nice little you know, element there. You know, you got your metallic, but it's not glossy, shiny, you know, too much foil. Okay, this um, does come in three different colors. You have your sort of bronze, your copper, your gold, and um, I thought this more subtle one looked great on that card there. Okay, for our next card, for a more fun, maybe birthday, maybe a child, or just a fun birthday card, I'm using the Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper. It comes in six by six in a lot of fun colors, more bright colors. You have your um, more subtle side with maybe graphic looks to them. And then on the other side, you have prints, streamers, wavy lines, stars, things like that. So a lot of fun, bright colors on that one there. I always write the colors nice and big and bold on the back because they are very small on the back of this paper here. So I like to be able to look at them a little bit more clearly when I'm um, looking for the matches to those colors. I also keep my scraps in a clear envelope, just um, with Stampin' Up! Styles, a little clear envelope, and I keep that right in there so my little pieces aren't wandering around. And if I do need a big piece, I know that they're all right there too. So that's the Bright and Beautiful set, and I'm going to be coordinating that with the um, Less of Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper. I'm going to coordinate that with a couple of things from the Beautiful Balloons. Okay, I already cut the balloon twice out of Berry Burst, and I attached some Baker's Twine to it and stuck those together. We're going to add that to the front of our card. Actually, I had that from another project, so it was laying here on my table. So I said, all right, sometimes a little thing like that can just spur on the what you decide to do for the whole card, right? Okay, so here we are. I have my accordion fold piece. Remember, again, it's 4 by 11, and it's scored at one and a half, three, five and a half, and eight. The big part is the part that's going to go against your white layer. Now, before we do that, we're going to emboss the white layer. So when I was thinking of what would be a fun background to do with this bright color birthday theme here, and I came up with the merry melody with the music. So when you sing happy birthday, you know, you have that music, right? So let's put this in here. This is a 3D embossing folder, and it is 6x6, six six, which is kind of nice because the 6x6 six six folders, as opposed to the ones that are a little smaller, the 6x6, six six, usually if there's a direction to your um, folder, sometimes you want to have the option of having a horizontal card and having your pattern go across this way, or a vertical card, and using the pattern that direction. So this one, you can go either way when they are six by six. Now to do the embossing for your 3D embossing folders, the ones that are thicker, just follow the guide on your base plate, and you have to use your base plate number one, your folder with your paper in it, and then plate number four. So that's the dark gray one here. So that's how you make your, <clears throat> excuse me, sandwich as you call it. So we will insert our paper in there. Now I'm going to try to get it to the right hand side here because I would like to see those cleft signs. Now I was noticing on this folder and some others that 
when I hold the folder what seems to be the proper orientation, see you have the Stamp Up logo here, this pattern is actually upside down because when I turn it this way, then I could see, might be hard to see on the camera, but I can see that now the G clef and the bass clef and the music notes are in the proper direction. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind if you want your folder to have certain parts of that design on there. Make sure that you line it up properly. Okay, so I'm going to do it like that, but when you run it through your machine, make sure you always do the hinge side first because the pressure is going to push it this way and um, with the open end, it gives it a little bit more leeway. If you go this way first and there's pressure putting it this way, it could crack your hinge. So always do the hinge side first. And if there's any room to wiggle, I know on the wide ones there aren't, but sometimes it's a little bit easier to crank it through if you can angle it just a little bit and have um, the corner kind of catch first and you work your way down. It's a little bit easier and I think there is a little bit of wiggle room in the machine for that. So I'm going to bring that over and I'm going to feed that in. Crank it through. And then I have my embossing. So I have to remember to turn it around the other way because now I see that the cleft signs are in the proper direction. Okay, so when you have something with a certain design that has a pattern that goes a certain direction, make sure you take that into consideration. All right, so we're going to glue that down to our base, which is Bubble Bath, a new color with the color refresh that Stampin' Up! did. We've got a lot of nice new colors. Okay, you know, put that down just like so. Okay, got a little spill of glue up there. I'm going to wipe that off and bring in my adhesive eraser. Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these anymore, but you can't get them at a craft store. Once your glue is no longer liquidy and it's just tacky, then you can take your eraser and just it just rubs right off. Love it. It's a handy tool to have around. Okay, so now just to keep in mind, I'm going to orient myself again. The big piece is going to get glued down here, and these are going to be folded over. I've already used my bone folder to burnish all those crease lines. They're nice and sharp. So now I'm going to arrange where my papers are going to go. Big piece there with the polka dots, the bold angles there, and then the little slash lines over there, angled lines there. Right? Okay, so this one, instead of a label like we did on the other two, I'm just going to use a circle punch. So I'm going to use Happy Birthday from the Beautiful Balloons stamp set. Going to stamp that in Berry Burst because I want a dark color, and that's right in here. The Berry Burst is part of that designer series paper. Okay, so I will stamp that there and bring in my two inch circle punch. And one thing with circle punches. You don't have to worry about getting anything straight because there are no straight lines. I'm going to bring this down to the bottom right hand side because I want my balloons to kind of be more up on top here coming down. So I'm going to leave space for them to be up there. Just like that. I'm going to get some mini dimensionals to put on there so that they look like they're coming toward me a little bit. I am going to be aware of where to put them. I don't want to put them too far on the side over here. So I do want to keep them on the inside. 
And I might put three just to make sure that there's enough to grip because they're little and they're just, I want to say hanging on by a thread. Get it? <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now, before I do that, I want to kind of measure where that's going to go. To tie in with music and make it seem like a happy birthday song, I'm going to put a few music notes on there. And I just happen to have some on the Zany Zoo set. There's a small stamp with the little music notes. So um, I'm going to grab that. And I haven't even used this one yet. So you know what, I'm going to quickly mount that right here. I'll show you my trick. Some of you have seen this before. I don't follow the directions that are on the stamp case. Okay, I find that's a little tricky to line them up. So this is the way I do it. Peel off the back. And these are the decals that are gonna go on the back of your stamps. That's just what the cling stamps are. I pull off the whole decal and I stick it down onto a clear block. And then you can see every backing of the decals have a little split, so it's a little, it gives you a place to peel that off. There we go. And then I turn my stamp over, and now I'm just, I can hover my block over there and see exactly where I'm putting that decal just get closer and closer and line it up until it's good and you're all set to go all right so i'm going to add a few music notes right over here and of course music notes have to be black so well they don't have to be but i'm gonna make them black so they stand out a little bit more All right, there we go. Oh, I got a little spot on there. Oh, well. Um, yeah, that's going to bother me. So, let me do this again. Okay, so one of those shows. And the other might be seen if you tip it, but that's okay. That's all right. So, I think that's adorable. I'm going to glue this down, and then I'll put this on after. All right, so I want to make sure I don't put glue too far over. I think that's probably good. So right from that half note to the left. And then we'll pop the balloons up. Let me try to wiggle it a little bit higher. There we go. Happy birthday. Well, who wouldn't like this birthday card? Hey, there we go. Isn't that sweet? I just love that. Anybody would like that? Kid, grown up, little kid, big kid, <laughs> 94 year old kid. I think it's just so, so, so sweet. Love those colors. Okay, so that's all of them. Bring them all back. Look at them side by side. This design, as you can see, works for any style. You've got your flowery, you got your masculine, and you've got just fun birthday. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you try some on your own and uh, share with me what you do. All right. Thank you again for watching. Mm -hmm.